I'm a little teapot, short and stout. This is my handle, this is my spout. When I get... Oh, hi. I guess we're ready to get going. Cue the intro. Welcome to part 62 of Avicii's and Unease Blender 2.7. In this video, I'll be showing you how to create a rig for a face setup, and instead of actually just having a modeled face, this is a rig which will let you animate a character talking, but only have the texture change different versions of mouths and eyes. If you have not seen the last three tutorials in this tutorial series, in part 59, part 60, and part 61 of this Blender 2.7 tutorial series, I showed you how to actually create this Lego character from start to finish, including the modeling, including some really detailed work in beveling and creating materials and depth of field blur. So go ahead and check those out. There'll be links to those in the description area below this video. Now for this video, I'm gonna be giving you a few files that you can actually find in the description area below that you can download for yourself to follow along. The first file will be a Blender file that contains just the head of this Lego character, uh, complete with the yellow material uh, on the head, but not the rest of the body, so you can at least follow along with the head. The other two files that you can download are the texture files of the mouth shapes in a grid and the eye shapes in a grid. And I'll get to the eyes in just a second, but here's the grid that I made. I actually drew these um, in a vector graphics program called Inkscape. Uh, which is a free open source program that you can use to draw vector graphics. And as you can see, I have mouth shapes or mouth poses for all the different sounds that a character might make with their mouth, like the A or A uh, shape of the mouth there, the V or F, so V or F, the R sound, the T sound or S sound, the O or U. Um, so as you can see, like the L, L kind of L shape. So we have basically all the shapes that we would need, including just some sort of angry and grinning and upset and jaw dropping and smiling uh, poses as well. So this is the sheet that I made in Inkscape and then laid out in Photoshop onto a grid that's evenly spaced. What's important here is that the texture is in a square. So I have um, 16 different mouths here. Of course, you could make 25. If you want to make a 5x5 five five grid instead of a 4x4 four four grid, that would allow you more mouth poses. And in the next picture, I have the eyes. I have fewer eyes here, but again, they're laid out in a 4x4 four four grid. I have the round eyes and then just sorts of different um, emotions of eyes, so closed eyes and, and kind of squinty eyes and angry eyes and unimpressed eyes and happy eyes. Uh, and sort of just semi-happy eyes. So I have a lot of different options to choose from. Uh, let's go ahead and press escape and jump back into Blender. Now, just to add textures to an object is not very difficult. Again, we'll be using nodes here. So if you wanna follow along, you can download the files in the description area below, the Blender file and the two texture files. Let's go ahead and get started. The first thing I wanna do here is I wanna select my head and press tab to go into edit mode. I'm gonna segment off the different parts of the head where the eyes are going to be and where the mouth is going to be. So I'm going to go into edge select mode. I'm going to zoom in here and I want the mouth, I'm going to hold shift in edge select mode to select the edge of where my mouth texture is going to be. I'm going to go and select basically four out from the middle and then I'll go uh, one down where the head just starts to curve down and I'm holding shift and right clicking to get all these. So this is the area in which the mouth is going to exist. So with these edges selected, I'm gonna mark a seam. This is how you do UV mapping. So I'm gonna press control E on my keyboard and I'm gonna say mark seam. Control E brings up your edges menu and then mark seam. Don't confuse that with mark sharp, it's mark seam. Great, when you mark a seam, the edges become kind of this red orange color. Let's go ahead and mark the seam for the edge of the eye section. So I'm gonna select um, just these edges here. Believe it or not, the eyes on a Lego character are only about halfway approximately up the head because there could be hair covering up most of this area. So uh, the eyes actually are a bit lower than you might think. Um, I'm gonna mark this as the perimeter of the eye section. So control E, mark seam. Now, the first thing I do actually here is make a UV map because I'm gonna actually have two UV maps associated with the same mesh. This is the first time that I've ever done this in this video series. Let's go ahead and take a look under the object data tab with the head selected and an edit mode, of course. We have a section here called UV maps 
and we're actually going to have two here, but what I'll do is go into face select mode. I'm going to make the mouth one first, so I'm going to put my mouse um, in that area in face select mode and press L, that stands for linked, and as you can see we have that area selected. I'm going to press uh, U and then unwrap right there, and that will make a new UV map right here. Now, I'm not going to use the same UV map for my eyes, um, but I'm going to name this one first. I'll double click in there, and I'm going to type UV mouth. Great. I'm going to press this plus to make a brand new UV map. I'll press A, B, select the mouth section. I'll press L in face select mode to select the eye section, and with the new UV map selected, I'll press U and unwrap and that will put the eyes in this UV map, and I'll name this one UV Eyes. Great. So let's go ahead and take a look at these UV maps. I've got several windows here. I've got a node editor window, my 3D view, and a second 3D view. I'm gonna change this one over here into a UV image editor window. Uh, right there. And as you can see, the eye sort of just unwrapped to the bottom here and the mouth unwrapped. If I select, I press A and then press L to select the mouse section just to the bottom and it fills up the entire space. Let's go ahead in this window and open. So I'll go to open and to my desktop, I've got the mouse layout uh, with a number 16 because there's 16 mouths there. And as you can see, um, this unwrapping is way too big and it's sort of crooked. What I'm going to do here first though is make a new copy of my yellow material that includes this mouth texture but I'm going to scale this down, uh, in other words the face is here down to only cover one of the mouths. Let's go ahead and make a copy of my yellow material. I'll go up here to the materials tab and I'm going to go back into object mode. I'm going to make a new slot in this area. Right now with this head selected, I have one material and one material slot on this um, object. So I'm going to make a new slot and then I'm going to put that same yellow material into that second slot, but then I'm going to make a copy of it that has the mouth texture above the yellow on it. So with that second slot selected, I'm going to add the yellow material. And as you can see here, I have this number four. That means four objects, including sub objects, sort of the um, two hands, the head, and the head has two, so that's four in total. Um, I'm going to press this little plus, and with this second slot material selected, it's going to make a copy of the yellow material, which we can then modify to add uh, on top of the yellow, the mouth textures with the transparency. So I'm going to name this one yellow uh, dash mouth. And now I can customize the node of this, but what I'll do first actually is with yellow mouse selected, I'll select my mouth and click on assign. So now the mouth material, uh, which is right now no different than the original yellow material, is on that mouth section. Let's go ahead now and customize these nodes to add the mouth texture in. So to do that, I'm going to take my original yellow material and I'm going to layer on top of it using a mix node, uh, a diffuse texture that has this image texture on it. So I'm going to press shift A on my keyboard. I'm going to add in a shader. It's going to be a mix shader. I'm going to put that right there so it happens after the L material is finished. I'll press shift A. I'm going to add a shader. It's going to be a uh, diffuse, so normal color shader. I'll plug that into my mix shader. Uh, as you can see, things are happening down here. It turned white because this color here is white. I'll press Shift A. I'm going to add in a texture, an image texture, and I'm going to plug that in. Of course, this is going to be our mouse texture. Notice how the mouth and eye images are PNG image files that have a checkerboard. In other words, transparency around them, so there's no white. That's why I chose a PNG image. Um, let's go ahead and open that image. Just by clicking there and selecting mouse layout 16. And as you can see, it's giving me sort of what I want, at least in terms of how the layout here is. Uh, it's putting those images there, but the transparency is not working properly, and that's because I have to plug the alpha here into the factor of this mix shader uh, by connecting it with a noodle. And as you can see, I have four little mouths and I can scale this down over here. Before I scale this down over here though, I'm going to flatten these um, edges out. And this is a big problem uh, for people um, unwrapping in 3D in many different 3D programs, including Blender. Um, they don't turn out straight uh, in terms of the lines uh, on the X and Y axes. So what I'm going to do here, and there are plugins or add-ons in Blender uh, to do this better, but I'm not going to use an add-on. I can just quickly do this. I'm going to hold uh, I'll press A actually to deselect all. I'll hold Alt and right click on this edge to select all of those vertices. Now I'll tap S and then up and down is Y. 
and 0 and enter. So S, Y, and then 0, and then enter. I'll do the same thing again. A to deselect all, hold Alt, right click, S, Y, 0, enter. That flattened that out. Select that one with Alt and right click, S, Y, 0, enter. I'm going to do these ones now. I'm going to flatten these side to side on the X axis. So S and then X and 0, enter. Over here, S, X, 0, enter. Now I'm just going to do this very quickly. Okay, so I've got my uh, UV map all squared out. I'll select it all with the A key. I'll tap S, and because I know this is a 4x4 grid, I'll tap 0 0.25 and press Enter. That way I know this is now um, 0.25 of its original size. I'm going to put it on the default mouth pose, which in my case, this is just my decision, is the just happy mouth, so I'll put it right up there. I'll zoom in and put it right at about the right spot. I might have to adjust it later on for up and down. But for now, I'm looking how far away that is and that is. Looks pretty good to me. Um, good. As you can see, it's on there now. Now, in terms of the animation that you saw at the beginning of this video, this is all I did for the mouth material. But I'm going to go, actually, almost. It's almost as much as I did for, the, for this uh, material. Uh, we'll get to the little plug-in right there in a few minutes. But what I'm going to do in this video is actually make the mouth material shiny. Uh, because in the animation that you saw, the mouths were just diffuse on top of a glossy material. And I didn't like that. So how you can fix that is this is the mouth that's being kind of put on top of the yellow material. Uh, but it's only diffuse. I'm going to fix that. I'm going to press Shift A. I'm going to add a shader. It's going to be a mix shader uh, right there. I'll plug it on top. So in between this mix shader and the diffuse uh, mouth texture. And I'm going to add in a glossy uh, shader. So uh, add shader and glossy. I'll plug that into there. And as you know, as you can see, it's sort of becoming gray. It's reflecting the gray of the world, I think. Um, everything has for now. Everything has an index of refraction, and this is plastic. In fact, we already have the Fresnel uh, nodes. I'm going to reuse that. I'll plug that into this mix shader, which will blend properly the glossy shader and the diffuse shader so that you get the reflections in the right way. Looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and do the same thing for the eyes now. Um, I'll go back into object mode here. I'm going to select my yellow material. I'm going to make a new slot. Um, on the head, uh, and it's empty right now. I'm going to add that same, in fact, I'm going to make a copy of yellow mouth so I don't have to redo all that node work. So I'm going to add yellow mouth to the new slot. I'm going to press this little plus to make a new copy of it. And as you can see, it has a 001 now, but I'll change this to eyes. I'm going to assign that to um, the eye faces. So I'll select the eye faces and click on assign. Um, I'm going to change the material here or the texture here. The image is still set to mouth. I'll change that to, and I don't have the image yet, so I'll bring that in. I'll click the little folder and on my desktop, eyes layout 10. There's 10 eyes. Uh, there were 10 eye pairs there. And now hopefully if I click on assign, this is where things get a little bit messy and blunder out, and I'm not quite sure if it's just because of my lack of knowledge about uh, using multiple UV maps on the same object. But if I go into the object data tab, you can see that now there are two UV maps, um, and only one can be set to render uh, at a time. So only one can show up to render at a time. Now we can solve this sort of. It's been a little bit buggy for me. Um, by, and I'll go back to the material tab, in the yellow mouth texture, I'm going to tell this image texture to only use the mouth UV map. In other words, um, this UV map. And then I'll do the same thing for the eyes. So let's go ahead in our materials for the mouth. I'll press Shift A. I'm going to add a input uh, UV map node. And I'll put it right there and I'll plug it right into the image texture so this image texture knows which UV map to use. It's going to use the mouth. And then I'm going to select the eyes and do the same thing here. Shift A, input, UV map, and I'll plug that in. Whoops, plug that in there. And I'll use the eyes. Now, I still don't know why it's not working at this point, but it will work once we use um, the modifier to make the animation work. Um, but what I could maybe do at this point is try um, using, uh, under the object data tab, is going to UV mouth and see if those go back and forth, but they don't. So 
It will work momentarily if you render it out. I'm not sure if it'll use the eyes right now, if the eyes will show up. What we have to do now is create our rig to make the UVs slide around. That means if I go into edit mode and I select under the object data tab, the eyes um, layout, and then I'll open up the eyes image there and tap. Oh, I know why it's not showing up. I haven't scaled these down, 0.25. Uh, to scale that down with the S key, and then I'll move that up to right there. That looks good to me. So now I have the uh, eyes about in the right spot, and you can always adjust these later. I'm going to just move these a little bit over so they're centered roughly. Looks pretty good to me. Okay, let's go ahead and create the rig that will let us actually slide around these UVs. Now, you can't actually animate UVs directly, but there is a modifier. It's called, and I'm going to go uh, back into object mode and select the head and go to the modifiers tab. Right now, we have one modifier on this object. It's just subsurf. It smooths out the object. But if I go to add modifier, there's a modifier called UV warp, which will get the job done nicely for us. This is the perfect modifier to make an animated texture on a character's face. Let's go ahead and add it. With the head selected, I'll go to add modifier and UV warp. Now the way this works is you're going to define how much you're sliding around your UVs, how much you're sliding around the unwrapped faces based on the movement or the distance between two objects. So we're actually going to be using bones here, but not to distort a mesh, rather to just have a distance between two objects. What I have to do here is I'm going to go to my front view in this window. I'll make uh, this window a bit bigger so we can work in it. Um, I'm going to press Shift C to put my 3D cursor back in the middle of my scene. I'm going to press Shift A. I'm going to add a plane. In fact, I'm going to add two, but I'll just make one um, for now. We'll copy it later. Um, this plane needs to be unwrapped, so I'll press tab to go into edit mode and then press U and unwrap and that will actually uh, unwrap it over here in my UV image editor window. I'll go back into object mode. I'm going to scale this down because right now it is two centimeters by two centimeters and I only want it to be one by one. If you have not changed your units in your file to um, the metric system, then it'll be just one blender unit by one blender unit, but I use uh, metric. So I'll press S and then 0 0.5 and I'll press enter. So S 0.5 and then enter will make it down just one. Um, the scale is now off. So I'll go to, and this is very important, I need my scale to be set to one and not 0 0.5. It actually knows that it's not the right size that it started off as. So I'll go down to object and apply and scale. There we go. Um, I'm going to subdivide this square up and then apply the mouth texture and I'll make a copy and then put the eye texture on the other one. This is going to be sort of our control center for animating the mouth and the eyes. So let's go ahead and apply the texture onto this object. Um, right now I have only two windows up, I believe. No, I've got uh, three. I've got my uh, node editor window here. So I've got this um, plane unwrapped. I need to add a material to it. I'll go to my materials tab, click on new. It adds just a default material. It's diffuse. I'll press shift A. I'm going to add a texture. It'll be an image texture. I'll plug that in. I'm going to open up on my mouth texture so right there and as you can see there are my mouths they look funny because of the transparency that isn't there so I'm gonna press shift a I'm gonna add in a shader it's gonna be a mix shader and we're gonna mix this diffuse image texture with a transparent shader so I'll press shift a I'll add a shader it'll be a transparent shader I'll add it right there I'll plug it into the shader here it made it all sort of transparent but I'm going to plug the alpha output of the image texture into the factor of the mix shader and I believe I have to reverse these now to get the way I want it and so now we can see our uh, mouth texture is very nicely Let's go ahead and duplicate this and make the square for the eyes. Before I do that though, I'm actually going to subdivide up this square. So I'm going to go into edit mode and as you can see, it's just sort of one um, square or one uh, polygon. Um, with it all selected in edit mode, I'll press W uh, to bring up my specials menu and then subdivide. I'm going to make seven cuts. Uh, the reason why I'm making seven cuts is I want a vertice. I'll go into my front view so you can see this or my top view actually. 
Um, we want a vertice right in the middle of each mouth or approximately in the middle of each mouth because we want to actually snap um, our bone controllers to these locations. So um, I have a vertice in the middle of each of the mouths, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of the extra edges. I'm going to hold Alt and right click to select that edge loop. I'll hold Alt and Shift and get these ones. So I'm going to get all the edges that don't run through the middle of a mouth. So I believe I have all those selected. I'm going to press X and I'm going to dissolve edges right there and make sure you have dissolve vert. So now I have um, edges running through um, the mouse and no extra edges at all. Perfect. Let's go back into object mode. I'm going to duplicate this uh, plane. So I'll press Shift D and then Y. Put that down there. Um, this object now has the same material, but I'll press this plus and I'm going to make this one just have, I don't care about the name actually, uh, but now I've made a different copy of the material. I'm going to change what material texture it has. I'm going to use the eyes right there. And as you can see now, if I go back into edit mode, I still have a vertice because I evenly space these out in Photoshop uh, between each one of the sets of eyes and there are extra spaces, which does not matter. Let's go ahead and add some controller bones for that. And I'll go back to my head object just for a moment. We have this uh, UV warp modifier. Um, we don't have any from our two objects, so we're gonna add bones for that. What I'll do here is on my mouth plane, I'm gonna go into edit mode. I'm gonna select the vertice at my default mouth, the same mouth that I unwrap to over here um, with my mouth texture. Um, I put the faces that I unwrapped over this default mouth, so I'm going to do the same thing over here. I'm going to select that same vertice. I'll press Shift S uh, to bring up my snap menu, and I'll select um, cursor to selected right there, cursor to selected. I'll go back into object mode. I'm going to add a armature bone there. So I'll press Shift A. I'm going to add a armature single bone. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to undo that, Control Z. I'm going to select my two planes, and I'm going to press R, X, 9, 0 for 90, and then press Enter to rotate them up so they're facing me from my front view. That'll make things a bit easier. So I can start adding bones now, um, and the bones will be upright. Um, I had them flat on the ground before, so now they're uh, facing me from my front view. Let's go back into edit mode of the mouse. I've got that vertice selected. Shift S, cursor to selected. Back into object mode, shift A, armature, single bone, we'll add an armature. Now, I want to scale this bone down, but it's very important that I don't just scale it down in object mode. I'll press tab to go into edit mode, and now I can right click to select um, this tail um, nub of the, the first bone that's in this armature, and drag it straight down, again, in edit mode, because we don't want to scale the entire armature, just one of the bones. Uh, that's very important. I'll make that one about uh, that big. I'll press shift A while still in edit mode of that armature, and shift A will add another bone um, at our 3D cursor. I can make this one just a little bit smaller. So now I've got two bones coming off the exact same location and one's a bit smaller than the other. Um, under the object tab, I'm gonna make them only display as wire so I can see both of them at the same time. And under the bone tab, I'm gonna give these bones names. The bigger bone is gonna be called, and the bone name is right here. It's gonna be called bone.base. And then the smaller bone is going to be called um, mouth.target. Actually, I'm going to change the name of the bigger one to mouth.base. Perfect. I'm going to go back into object mode of the armature. I'm going to give under the object tab um, the whole armature a name, an object name, not an armature name, but an object name. So I'm going to call it armature.mouth. Perfect. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to now point that um, UV warp modifier to these two separate bones. And we're going to animate only the target bone in the bone's pose mode. And this bone will move around. We can press G and move it around to the different uh, locations of the mouse. And the UV warp modifier will actually slide that texture around on the surface of the Lego person head. Let's go ahead and set that up. So I'll zoom out. I'm gonna select the Lego head and then go to my modifiers tab. There's the UV warp modifier. I'm actually gonna move it up to be above or before 
the uh, subsurf modifier. So now the subsurf modifier is happening after UV warp. Um, the from object is going to be the target. So I'm going to select my armature mouth. That's why we named the object name there. And then the bone is going to be called the target mouth target. And then we're going to use the same armature and the mouth base. And we want to make sure we're using the right UV map here. So I'm going to select uh, UV mouth. So now what I should be able to do, and I'm going to make this window a bit wider, is I should be able to grab just the target bone. Actually, I'm going to select the base bone, and I'm going to press H to hide it. So we're not going to be bothered with that bone anymore. I'm going to grab this uh, target bone, and if I move it around, you can see it's sliding around the mouth texture. So I can put it up there, and then he's grinning, and then right there, and then he's scared. Now you'll notice that it's going to be hard for me to position these in the right spot, and that's why we made these vertices in edit mode. We can use our snap tool down here, this little magnet, and it's set by default to snap to the closest uh, vertex. What I can do now is grab, and I'll go back into my front view, and that's good enough. I'll grab that bone, and I, it'll snap exactly to where each one of those mouths is, and yes, we could go way off, but we won't. <laughs> so as you can see now, I can put it in any one of these spots, and it's a little bit off. You can see that the bottom of the L mouth is getting cut off, so is that one. So what I'll do is I'll go back over into the uh, UV image editor window, and I'll go into edit mode of the mouth's UV map. So I'll go to mouth and right there. And as you can see, the bottom of this mouth is getting cut off. So I'm going to slide, I'll press G to grab, and then I'll press, actually I'm going to press escape and turn off snapping. Snapping happens in all windows at the same time. And you turn it off and it turns off in all the windows. So I'll press G and then Y and move that down just so that that mouth is not getting cut off. And that means that the smile is going to be a bit higher. That's okay though. Let's go back into object mode and see how we're doing. Are any of the mouths getting cut off? I got to turn snapping back on, of course. That one looks good. That one looks pretty good. Yeah, I think we're doing pretty good. And you can adjust it so that things are in the right spot. Um, but my texture uh, should be pretty good for all the mouths once you correct one of them. Let's go ahead and do the same process with the bones um, and the UV warp modifier for the eyes. What I'll do is I'll go and select the eyes uh, plane. I'll go into edit mode with a tab key, of course. The default eyes are just the round eyes. That's where I probably unwrap to, hopefully. I'll press Shift S, and I'll put my cursor to that selected vertice. I'll go back into object mode. I'll press Shift A. I'm going to add a single bone armature. Um, again, we're not going to scale this armature down. We're just going to go into edit mode by pressing tab, of course, and I'll grab um, that top nub of that bone, the, I believe it's the tail nub of that bone, and drag it straight down. We still have snapping turned on. And I'll put it right about there. That's going to be the base. I'll press Shift A in edit mode still. Um, this will be the target. I'll press Tab to go back into object mode. Um, I'll make sure that we can see these bones under the object tab only as wires. And let's go ahead and name these bones. I'm going to go into edit mode of the armature, select the bigger bone. And that's going to be eyes.base. And then the smaller bone is going to be eyes.target. Perfect. Let's go into the bones pose mode and let's associate it with a UV warp modifier on the head. So I'll select the head, go to the modifiers tab. We have one UV warp modifier. I'm going to type in um, mouth for that one just so we don't confuse it with the other one that we're about to add. I'm going to add modifier UV warp. We'll name this one UV warp dash eyes. And we're going to repeat the same process here. Again, we're going to put it before or above the subsurf modifier. I'm going to select my armature, which we didn't name. So let's go ahead and we'll select the armature. And under the object tab, I'm going to give this armature a name, armature.eyes. And I think we're good to go. Let's go back to the head. And under the modifier tab, there is an armature called armature eyes. The bone is going to be the target. That's the first one. It's a bit backwards. You think you'd specify the base first, but you specify the target first. And then two armature eyes, and then the base. Again, the target is the smaller one. I need to specify, though, a UV map that I'm working with. It's going to be the eyes UV map, and it's all set up. I can minimize it. And I'm going to hide the bigger bone, H. And so now, 
if I grab with um, the magnet snapping turned on, I can then move this one around, and as you can see, I can pose the eyes and switch between the different eyes. And yeah, you could probably even mess it up and go to the edge too. But that's the basic setup for a rig. This is exactly the same setup that I had, uh, minus a few of the eyes for my animation at the beginning of this tutorial. Um, the benefit of using bones here, and yes, you could use other objects. You don't have to use two bones, a base and a target bone. You could use like two empties or two meshes. Um, but the benefit here is that you can actually create a pose library to help you animate quickly. But that will be in the next video in which I show you how to actually take a recorded audio clip of dialogue, bring it into Blender so you can actually scrub around in your timeline and hear the audio wherever you are. And you can hear it slowly and then animate a mouth to a piece of audio very quickly. This is a very fast process. Once you have a rigged mouth set up just like we have here, it actually only takes, I only spent about 30 minutes or so animating the uh, mouth in the animation that you saw at the beginning of this video. So it's a very quick process to use this setup. That will be it for this video though. Please don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel to see more tutorials just like this one. And please check out my Facebook page at facebook.com slash borncg. That'll be it for this one. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.